One is a video generation model that lets you generate videos like these. And I'm going to show you how to install it. Okay, so first, in order to get this working, you're going to need Comfy UI with an NVIDIA GPU. This works on GPUs, but as low as six gigabytes of VRAM. I made a video on installing Comfy UI. I'll just add the section on installing Comfy UI into this video since the process is exactly the same. And then I'll cut back to the installing one component of the video. If you already have Comfy UI installed, then just skip that section of the video. Okay, we're going to be heading to the Comfy UI GitHub. There's going to be a link in the description that'll take you to this page. You want to scroll down. to where you see Windows Portable, and you wanna to go to Direct Link to Download. This is gonna give you the Comfy UI Windows Portable package in a zip file. You're gonna to wanna to click this and save the file. The file you download is gonna contain the entire Comfy UI installation. So put that file wherever you want your Comfy UI final installation location to be. To extract it, you simply just right click and then go to Extract All. If I click on this and then I click extract, it's going to extract this folder to the same folder where this file is contained, which would be right next to here. And if you go inside here in the Comfy UI Windows Portable NVIDIA folder, and then in the Comfy UI Windows Portable folder, you, you could see your Comfy UI installation here. But we don't want to click run on anything yet. If this is your first time installing Comfy UI, which it should be because I told all the people to skip this section if they already have Comfy UI installed, you want to go and install Comfy UI Manager. Comfy UI Manager is a plugin that manages the installation of other plugins. Uh, and it's a pretty much a required plugin at this point in Comfy UI. I'm pretty sure they're going to be integrating this in the future. But as of right now, you have to install it separately. So that's what we're going to do. From the Comfy UI installation, you want to go to Comfy UI and then custom nodes, taking you to this folder. Your folder should be empty. I have a few extra plugins here, but yours should be, um, should only really contain these two folders and this one. And then we wanna go to the address bar and you wanna click the address bar. After you click the address bar, you wanna type CMD and enter. This is gonna open a command prompt inside of your custom nodes folder, which is where you want, which is where you wanna be for the next step. So you're gonna to wanna to copy this text. It's gonna be in the description of the video. You can go down and check for that. But you're gonna to wanna to copy this text, git clone uh, the Comfy UI manager, Comfy UI manager. You're gonna to wanna to copy this and then press enter. Once you do this, it's gonna download the Comfy UI manager to your custom nodes folder. Great, once you have that installed, the next thing we wanna do is turn on a setting that often people tell you to turn off for a lot of reasons, but we're gonna to get to that in a little bit. You wanna to go to your desktop and then right click. If you're on Windows 10 or lower, you should already see the button that we wanna click here, which is the NVIDIA control panel. But if you're on Windows 11, you'll see this, which doesn't show it. You have to click show more options, and then you'll see the NVIDIA control panel. This is what we wanna open here. So you click onto this, and this will open the NVIDIA control panel. And you wanna go down to manage 3D settings, then you want to come here to CUDA SysMem Fallback Policy. And you want to turn on Prefer SysMem Fallback. The default setting is the driver default setting, which means that it will be turned off. The reason why you want to turn this on, basically what this does is allow it where if a model is too large for your GPU, it'll allow the model to offload from your GPU onto your CPU RAM. So if you don't have enough VRAM to run a model, it allows you to still run the model by offloading it to your uh, CPU RAM. Oftentimes people tell you to turn the setting off because if you already have enough memory to fit a model onto your GPU, it is slower to offload to your RAM. Sometimes, even if the model can fit in your entire GPU, you still end up with some parts of the model being offloaded to your CPU, which you don't want. Okay, that's why people will tell you to turn this off sometimes. However, these video models are so large that most people wouldn't be fitting this in their GPU. So you definitely want to be turning this setting on if you've had problems in the past, not being able to run the, the, the model, getting out of memory errors. More than likely, turning this on should be able to solve your problems. The model will go slower, but at least it will run, as, whereas before it just wouldn't work. Make sure to click Apply when you're done, and then now we can go back to the Comfy UI folder. Okay, so from here, we want to run NVIDIA GPU.bat. This is going to open Comfy UI in your default browser. If for some reason or another, you click this and it doesn't run, you see some error or some problem, you wanna go into update and then click update comfyui.bat. Then come back out here and then try running it again. If it still doesn't work, you wanna run update comfyui and python dependencies.bat. 
and then come back and run it again. If it still doesn't work, then hopefully you didn't skip the part of the video where I told you that this only works on Windows with NVIDIA GPUs. Hopefully you didn't skip that part of the video when I said that. Um, but assuming you're on Windows with an NVIDIA GPU and you're still having issues, you more than likely have some specific problem with your system. So you wanna go and check on the Comfy UI GitHub to see if you can find solutions for whatever it is that you're experiencing. Okay, great. So you run this and this will open Comfy UI in your default browser. So now that you have Comfy UI installed, what you're going to need to do is download these workflows that I have. The workflows contain the link to the models that you're going to need in order to get the workflow up and running. The workflows are on my civit.ai profile so they can download it from there nice and easy. Once you download the workflow, you're going to get a zip file that contains the JSON file. That's the actual workflow. You simply just take that JSON file and drag it into your Comfy UI instance that you're running. And it's going to open up the workflow here. So the one that we're starting with is the tech to video workflow. One has image generation capability, so it can generate from text or images, both of them. In this one, we're going to be starting with the text to video workflow. I'm going to be explaining a few things about how the model works. So you can see here, all of the, the links to the models that you're going to need are here and the locations where where the models need to go inside of your comfy UI folder is here. So you can see models, the fusion model, where that would be would be. So from wherever you have comfy UI installed, you would start there, go into comfy UI, and then the models folder. And this is where all of your models are stored. So for the first one, the, the text, the image model, you're going to want to go to the diffusion models folder here. And that means when you download the file, you're going to save it inside of this folder. So this is going to be different for everyone. It depends on where you put your comfy UI folder. And very much the same. We have the 1.3 billion parameter model here and the 14 billion parameter model. So the 1.3 billion parameter model is a smaller model that's faster and it should be lower quality. And then we have the 14 billion parameter model that's, well, larger and higher quality. We also have the FP16 and the FP8 versions of the 14 billion parameter model. The FP8 version is a smaller version of the FP16 model. Basically, this is smaller in terms of the number of parameters the model has. And this is smaller in terms of how large is each individual parameter. I'm just explaining that since a lot of people might see these numbers and they see them all the time, but they don't exactly know what they mean. That's what it means. Okay, so we have the FP16 version here. Most people shouldn't really be able to run this appropriately on their GPU. And you probably want to run the other version of the model. I just included them for completeness. But yeah, we're going to be testing the 1.3 billion parameter in this year. Both of these go into the model the Fusion Models folder. So you would just pick which one you want to use and download those to your models, the Fusion Models folder. This is by far the fastest one, the 1.3 billion parameter model. If we come down here, we have the text encoder. This goes into the models text encoders folder. Going back to the folder from earlier, that would be inside of this folder. You look down here to text encoders and you'd be downloading the files there into this folder. So we see here the Omnet T5XL that goes into your text encoders folder. Then we have a VE that goes into the models VEA folder. And if you go back and check the folder right here. So, okay, great. So if we zoom out now in the load diffusion model, we have the 1.3 billion parameter model. Then in the load clip section, we have the Omnet T5XL. And in the VAE, we have the WAN VAE. All of this will be set up if you download the workflow appropriate through that. So one thing you'll notice is we have uh, two prompts, which I guess is interesting now since a lot of the models that have been being released lately are just contained the one prompt. They don't have negative prompts in them. But we have a positive and negative prompt. And you'll notice the negative prompt is in Mandarin. The reason why it's like this is because the WAN model is Mandarin. And this is the basic negative prompt that people kind of share around. You don't have to use this, by the way. You can use a traditional English negative prompt. I'm just including this because you might be confused as to why you randomly see Mandarin negative prompts. That's why, okay? And then we have the prompt that we're going to be using, which is a close-up of a dog. So that's the video that we're going to be generating. If we move over, the part that I want to address here, the most important part of all of these is... So the resolution of the model is 8... 48 by 480. That's the 480p resolution. You can use variants of this, by the way. You could flip it around. So you could say 480 by 848 because it was trained on in both of those. In general, if you generate an image that's further away from the size that the model was trained on, you get worse performance. So if I use the 480p model, which the 1.3 billion parameter model is, if I use that to generate a 720p image, if I use that to generate a 720p image, it won't look as good. You can see here with length, we have 81. This is the number of frames you're going to be generating. One was trained to generate images at 16 f. So that means to say that one second is 16. So at 81, that's five seconds of footage. Okay. There's one extra frame there. If you do your math, you'll notice there's one extra frame. But like, yeah, this 
this is five seconds of footage at 16 FPS. If you're running into issues with that model not being able to generate, this is where you first want to change things. Ideally, changing the length of the video um, and then messing with the resolution. Since when you mess with the resolution, the quality of the video drops, not because the, there's less pixels, but because the data, the image that you're generating is further away from the train data. So in general, you want to change the length first, though that can also cause issues as well. Okay. If you set up everything here and you run your prompt, the image that you're going to get here is this. And on a 3070, which has eight gigabytes of VRAM, this takes four minutes and three seconds to be able to generate. So yeah, so it's a five second video, a close up of a dog. You can see clearly it's a well close up of a dog. So now we're going to move on to the image to video. So the image to video is, is very similar to the text to video. Instead, you also use an image as your starting point, as opposed to just using text as your starting point. We have a similar setup here where we have the models that we can download and the folders that they can, they go into. The only addition here is obviously have an image model instead of a text model. And we have the clip vision model. I think at this point, it should be relatively self-explanatory. The model clip vision model, this model here goes into your clip vision folder. And then these other models here, they go into a diffusion model folder. So you can see here clearly they have a 480p and a 720p model. What's the difference between those? The only difference between the 480p model and the 720p model, since technically they're the same model, the only difference is that the 480p model was trained on 480p images. And then the 720p model is the 480p model, except it has additional training on 720p images. You might be wondering, well, okay, so doesn't that just mean that this one is better? Well, no, because the 720p model was trained additionally on 720p, it actually is worse at generating 480p images. It obviously can generate higher quality 720p videos, but it's worse at generating 480p despite being trained on the same data. Cause that's how these types of models tend to work. So again, we have the FP8 model and the FP16. People should be leaning towards the FP8 models because these ones largely are not going to work that well on most PCs. I just include them for completeness. We have our image here. This is our starting image. So this is going to be your first frame of the video that we're going to be using. And the prompt, the text prompt, we have the same negative prompt from earlier. I already explained why it's in Mandarin, but you can change that if you want. And we have woman smiles and looks at camera. And we're generating at 480 by 480 at 81. Okay. If we move forward, the video that we get is this. Things to keep in mind. Only 3070 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you cannot generate with this model anyway, which is the model that we're using, I forgot to show this, is the 480p FP8 model. You cannot generate at the full resolution. You can generate with the GigaOff model, which I'm going to be covering later, but at the full like 480p resolution, which is 848 by 480, you can't do that. This was around, this is around the max that I was able to do. And the, the time it takes to generate at this is about 26 minutes to generate a 480 by 480 image with the FP8 model here. Okay, great. So moving on now, this is the image to video workflow, but now with GigaOff. GigaOff is a different model type that allows for different kinds of memory management inside of Comfy UI. You don't have to download Comfy UI GigaOff in order to use this, but you'll be prompted to install missing nodes. If you open this workflow and you don't have the GigaOff thing, you'll see a, a thing that says install missing nodes when you open it up. You just have to click that and then you'll be able to download it. But if that doesn't show up, you simply just go to manager, system nodes manager, and type GigaOff. And you see Comfy UI GigaOff here. Comfy UI, I obviously already have it installed. But you simply just have to click install or, or on the Comfy UI gig off here and then restart your Comfy UI instance to be able to use it. The gig off models are easier for Comfy UI to be able to manage memory. Technically, Comfy UI should be able to manage the memory in a sense of it should be able to offload parts of the model to your CPU and be able to run appropriately. Having as low as like eight gigabytes of VRAM, I consistently run into problems with that. Whereas with this, this is way more consistent. The gig off models are way more consistent in terms of memory management. To the point that with the gig off version, whereas before you can max out at like 480 by 480 with the regular version, on a 3070 consistently. You can actually get up to 480 by 848 on your 3070. So on an 8 gigabyte GPU, you can generate at this resolution, okay? Um, and it takes the same amount of time as the 480 by 480 uh, image. So you might be confused as to why it takes the same amount of time despite being a higher resolution. This is largely because most of the time is actually spent copying the model back and forth and not actually spent necessarily inferencing over the model. So that's why it takes so long. This up, by the way, I'm not dealing with optimizations in this video. I'll be making a future video about that. So if you want to hear about optimization, I think you can get this down to as low as like 14 minutes on a 3070. And I definitely feel like there's at least one or two tricks in that video that don't really get talked about a lot. In this version here, we're using the GigaOff model. And the difference with the GigaOffs is that you put them in models units instead of putting them in the models diffusion models folder. There's different sizes here that they have. I tested all of these different versions. I could not notice much of a difference in terms of the quality output between the Q4 and Q6 versions of the model. Just so you know, keep in mind, the actual speed difference between them is also negligible, as I said, because you're spending most of the time copying the model anyway. If you're on a 3070, you might as well just use the Q6 model, which is the largest version. Anyway, so this is our starting image. 
And the prompt that we have here is the same as the last one. Woman smiles and looks at camera. And now with this at five seconds, the video that we get here is this. You'll notice that this is actually higher quality than the last video. Um, Not just higher quality in the sense of there are more pixels, but higher quality in that seemingly is more respecting the prompt and the consistency of what we're trying to go for. This is because the size of this is closer to the training size, meaning that you end up with something that's more representative of the data set it was trained on. So it tends to be better at the resolution that it was trained on. If you're using this on a 3070, ideally, you just want to use the Q6 version, because like I said, there's no real speed difference because you're spending so much time just copying things back and forth. So you might as well just use the biggest version of the model at that point. We also have the 720p versions of the model. Typically with the 3070, you can't really generate at the 1280 by 720p resolution very well, but the Giga versions you can. The difference is though, you're gonna have to scale this down by like one third. Like the length of the video has to scale down by like one third. It's gonna be seven by 128. Amount of frames that you can generate scales down by like a third in order to get it to fit on your GPU. So this is the max you can really do on like a, an eight gigabyte GPU. By the way, we take the same amount of time as generating a regular 480p video because we're essentially scaling down the size to be the exact same amount of data so it would take just as long as the other thing so with this other workflow here we have the text to video workflow that's also giga and similarly we have the q4 qs the q5 qs and the q5k so yeah as for optimizations as i said the amount of time it takes to generate a video 81 frame at the 480 resolution is on a 3070 it takes about 25 minutes you can get that down to about 14 or so minutes with some optimizations i'm making a video about that the numbers that i'm sharing in this video use sage attention so sage attention is a attention mechanism that makes things a bit faster if you're not using sage attention those numbers might not be 100 reflective my next video is going to be dealing with that as well as part of the optimizations if you don't have sage intention as attention installed because it can be a bit laborious to get it installed. I'm going to be addressing that in a future video and also other optimization techniques as well. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. Catch you in the next video. And yeah.